So Walmart must have finally caught on to the whole PUBG, Fortnite, and esports phenomenon and looked at the whole landscape of gaming and said, we can make a boatload of money if we just sell some gaming PCs. And that's exactly what they've done. They recently announced a new line of gaming laptops and desktops called Overpowered, or OP, that they've done in collaboration with the esports arena company. And so far, a lot of tech news outlets are giving this line high praise, saying the core specs are pretty decent and the pricing's relatively fair for what you're getting. But what are you getting, really? The Intermax Lick Fusion 240mm all-in-one liquid cooler features a one-of-a-kind RGB sink water block with built-in flow indicator, static pressure optimized RGB fans, and a high-efficiency ceramic bearing pump for exceptional durability and noiseless operation. Click on the link below to learn more. Anyway though, I'm trying to stay optimistic with this whole gaming line thing, but at the same time, I don't want Walmart to follow suit with a lot of existing system integrators who sell very affordable pre-builts at the expense of cutting corners where they shouldn't, throwing dirt cheap cases into their systems, or really cheap power supplies that blow out in the first six months just so that they can make their margins. And the last thing I want is a bunch of kids or adults going out and buying these systems because they're there and they're relatively affordable and they have all these really good core specs, and then finding out too late that that they bought a junk rig. So yeah, I've seen how some SIs make their money. I don't agree with it fully, and I'm hoping that Walmart isn't going down the same path. I can't say for sure just yet, and there's still gonna be a lot of questions that go unanswered in this video because we only have so much information to work with, but we're at least gonna be looking at that information more closely today so we can infer some things about these systems. Now I'm gonna save the gaming laptops for another video. We're only gonna be taking a look at the gaming desktops, starting with the DTW1 at $1,399, DTW2 at $1,899 and the DTW3 at $2,099 US. You can see the cases look pretty identical and they each have a Core i7-8700 from Intel. This is a non-case SKU. You won't be able to do any CPU overclocking on any of these systems. As you might expect, we've got different graphics cards for each of these systems, starting with a GTX 1070, moving up to a GTX 1080, and then finally a GTX 1080 Ti. We're also upgrading the memory slightly, going from 16 gigs to 32 gigs, and again, 32 gigs. Storage is the only other major change between these systems as far as I could tell with a 256 gig SSD on the DTW1 and then the other two have a 512 gig SSD. I believe all of them, however, do have a mechanical hard drive probably of two terabytes. Let me double check. Yeah, they all feature a two terabyte 7200 RPM mechanical drive. Now we're only gonna be taking a closer look at the DTW1 for today because we can assume that the other systems are put together in a very similar fashion with the same quality and so forth. So again, this is the one featuring the GTX 1070. First, let's take a look at the core specs here. The list is fairly vague. Again, we have that Intel Core i7-8700 with a GeForce GTX 1070 with eight gigs of VRAM. Now there's no manufacturer or add-in board partner listed here. We'll take a closer look at that in the pictures in just a moment. For memory, we have 16 gigs of RAM at 2440 megahertz. First of all, it's funny that they don't list DDR4 even though that's relatively implied. And this is a very peculiar RAM speed uh, indicating that you know this is probably just sort of a, an OEM kit that's being sold exclusively to system integrators that you can't find on the market because I have never seen a kit of DDR4 at this rated speed. You guys let me know if you've seen otherwise. Uh, storage is two terabyte hard drive, 256 gig SSD, also no manufacturer, Windows 10, VR ready, and a bunch of other basic specs. So assessing this at face value, right off the bat, it looks and sounds like a pretty powerful system. I mean, you've got a Core i7-8700, a GTX 1070. Your ears kind of perk up when you hear those specs and you go, hey, that's, that's a pretty fast rig. And I'm sure it probably is. But let's take a look at some of the finer print and details here. Uh, starting with the case, let's take a look at some photos, shall we? Now from the outside, it looks like a pretty proper case. You got tempered glass on the front and side, if that's what you're into. You got RGB fans. I would imagine that this is RGB because why not? It's 2018, bitches. And it looks relatively clean and simple and straightforward. Now something else that's interesting about this photo is that if you look at the rear exhaust fan, you can see that it's kind of eclipsed by this rectangular shape right where the CPU cooler would be, meaning that this is probably an aftermarket heatsink tower design cooler, and we don't have to deal with an Intel stock cooler in one of these systems, if, if this picture is accurate, assuming. Uh, so that's good. That means we're gonna see potentially lower temperatures and a better noise profile, uh, at least for the cooling solution on our CPU. If you look at the back of the case, there are a couple things that stand out to me. For starters, we've got this power supply cutout that looks a little on the cheap side. I mean, I'm not gonna judge a case by its 
PSU cutout, because that's a saying, but I don't know. It just it just doesn't look super high quality to me. It looks it looks kind of thin and flimsy because you can really see the, the cutout edges and sort of see that it wasn't painted on the inside there. And also the thumb screws on the left side panel, or I guess on the right side panel, are relatively cheap looking. Obviously the ones on the tempered glass look fine, but these ones look small and they look a little plasticky. If they're plastic, that's a sign right there. And also, I just noticed, I skimmed over this initially, but maybe you guys caught it. If you look at this, the front I.O., if you look at the actual case ports, we have three USB 2.0 ports. No mention of any USB 3.0 ports. It's 2018, people, and there are no USB 3 ports on this case. That is a red flag that this is no more than a $60 case, if I were to take my best guess. So. It looks really nice, but when you take a closer look, that's not entirely the case, pun intended. Now, while we just learned some things about this case from looking at its behind, this picture also tells us some things about the other components in the system. For one, we've got this case fan that's included. Again, it's probably RGB, or even if it's not, who cares? It looks to be a 120 millimeter fan. I don't see any red flags right off the bat. But to the left of that, we can see our motherboard's rear I.O., which gives us a couple warnings that this might be a budget option. For starters, we've got two PS2 ports, not even a combo port, just like one for mouse and one for keyboard. And we have a single D-Sub VGA port. Not that you're gonna need any video outs, most likely from your motherboard because we've got a discrete GPU here, but even on budget boards, you typically see a DVI port there as well, maybe an HDMI, but no, you just get VGA D-Sub, which again indicates that this is a relatively cheap board. And then I think the biggest indicator here that, that we're pretty entry level is two USB ports. Even some of the $60 or $70 B360 options have more than two USB 3 ports. So again, I'm not exactly sure what motherboard this is, but I have a pretty good idea of how much Walmart might have spent on it. Just below, we see the rear I.O. for our video card, which is evidently rocking a two-slot design, and the reference video outputs for Pascal, a three display port, one HDMI, and one dual-link DVI. What really gave this card away as to what it might be, however, was uh, seemingly the least important thing on this back panel, which is uh, the ventilation slots. Based on this pattern, I was actually able to match it up with a Gigabyte card. The rear panel of the Gigabyte GTX 1070 WinForce OC model actually matches up perfectly with the rear panel here, and it's also the cheapest Gigabyte Gigabyte GTX 1070 currently on the market, leading me to believe that this is the card that we're seeing here. This is pretty good news if it's true, because Gigabyte is a reputable added board partner for graphics cards, and this card seems to have a relatively decent dual fan heatsink cooler on it, making this one of the more compelling components in this entire system. Moving along here, it looks like we actually have a PCIe expansion card for what looks to be USB 3.1 Type-C. It's hard to say if this is Gen 1 or Gen 2, but I would imagine Walmart installed this card because they knew that Type-C is becoming increasingly popular and they wanted to put that on their spec list without having to upgrade to a much fancier and more expensive motherboard that would feature that port. So I suppose this is a much cheaper solution that still gets the job done. Now something kind of interesting that I barely caught, I, I actually noticed it just moments before I started shooting this video, is if you look past this ventilation slot at the right, you can kind of see a silhouette of custom sleeved cables going to the graphics card. These are definitely PSU cables and they're definitely custom because stock PSU cables don't bend and sort of curve this naturally or gracefully, which is kind of cool and makes sense too if you're selling a system with a case that has tempered glass on the side panel, you'd want it to look relatively nice on the inside as well to sort of uh, appeal to gamers and all that. So it makes sense. Spend another 20, 30 bucks on your overhead, get some nice sleeved cables in there. And also below the cable, you can kind of see a power supply shroud. You can kind of see the orange lighting reflecting off of whatever cheap steel is in there, uh, but it's not too surprising to see a power supply basement inside of a cheap case these days because they're relatively inexpensive to integrate. So that's kind of interesting. And then finally, we've got our power supply. Let's talk about the PSU for a minute here. Like I said, a lot of system integrators are known to cut corners, specifically with their power supplies that blow out way sooner than gamers would like them to. So I can't really tell you much about this unit. You know, I can't tell you the wattage, the efficiency, if it's 80, 80 plus certified or not. There are units that look this cheap from behind that are still 80 plus certified. So I can't just say immediately that it's not, um, but it remains to be seen what kind of wattage and efficiency we're actually gonna be looking at here. For me, power supplies are literally the biggest concern with pre-belts because they have the potential to damage every other part in your system. They connect to everything. And if something were to go seriously south, you could be looking at a lot more than just a damaged PSU. So hopefully whatever units in there 
Walmart has chosen wisely. So what do we know for sure? We know that we've got an 8700 in here, which retails for $320 right now on Amazon and Newegg. We know that we have a GTX 1070, most likely something like a WinForce OC, which is also about $370 right now on Newegg. And the two parts that I am pretty certain as far as their value are the case, which I'm gonna guess is around $60, and the motherboard, which I'm also gonna guess goes for around $60. So if you add all that up, you get three million, no, that's wrong. You get $810. Subtract that from 1400, you get 590. Yes, I had to use a calculator for that because I suck at math. That means Walmart potentially has $600 left over to split between memory, cooler, power supply, SSD, hard drive, and cables, which apart from memory, to be honest, is actually pretty doable. They can get away with some pretty decent hardware with that amount. The problem is, is that they don't really have $600 left over to split between those parts because they have to skim some of it off the top for profit for themselves. When you buy a pre-built, some of the money goes to the person selling the system. And we just don't know how much Walmart is planning to skim off the top of these desktops in the first place. If they're aiming for a $300 profit, then they're only leaving you $300 left to split between the six components that I just rattled off. And in that case, it's gonna be a pretty bad build. You're gonna get a crap power supply, a crap SSD, and so forth. But until more details come to light, we just don't know. But that's all I got for now, guys. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Toss a like on this video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Guys, thanks for tuning into this one. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.